Siddharth, I see from your record, so introduce yourself first. Sir, I am from Jalandhar and I have done my education in uh, B.Tech in Electronics from Guru Nanak Dev University, Amritsar. Then I did my MBA from Indian Institute of Foreign Trade, Delhi. I worked in Gale for two years and uh, after that uh, I worked as BDPO in Punjab government. And uh, uh, I have uh, been selected in DANEP service uh, in CSE 2021, sir. And my interests include following geopolitical news, military acquisitions, and also reading. I see from your records that you appeared nine times in civil services. Yes, sir. Why are you not passing nine times? Uh, sir, uh, firstly, in my earlier attempts, it had to do with my optional. Uh, I wasn't able to score in uh, my optional, which was geography. Then I switched over to political science and after that I was able to clear it. Geography. How come in the world you chose geography after doing electronics and communication engineering? Sir, uh, at that time I studied uh, the syllabuses of most of the optionals and uh, the reading material of geography was easily available and at that time it was quite a scoring subject and I also developed an interest in it so that's why I chose it. So you go for uh, easier things in life? Sir, uh, I like to face challenges but for the sake of uh, clearing the exam I had to choose what was best for me at the moment so I thought uh, geography as an option would be suitable. Biggest challenge would have been to accept your own subject. Electronics and communication related to that something, physics for example, you must have studied physics a lot, uh, mathematics a lot in the electronics communication or something like that. So biggest challenge would have been that to pass in your own subject. Sir, uh, that is true but uh, that wasn't my, those weren't my uh, forte so I felt that uh, uh, it would be better that I chose a subject for which um, the reading material was easily available and um, also I am able to score well in that. That is why I chose that because for the sake of clearing the exam I had to choose what was best for me. But uh, Siddharth, if we post you as a collector of a district and you, after two years you say I could not do anything because this is not my forte, this is agriculture district, I am a collector engineer, I am a foreign trade. So, no, I cannot do anything in this district. Please post me to this. Will it work in the civil services? Sir, Wherever you are posted, you have to do well? Sir, that is true. But uh, as a civil servant, uh, we are expected to face a lot of challenges. But we are also expected to find out the best ways uh, using which we can meet those challenges. So, best ways and the most convenient ways uh, using which we can solve any particular problem. So, I think... Um, in that sense also, it was right for me to choose an optional uh, in which I am able to <coughs> score well as compared to other optionals. Okay. <coughs> you finished your international trade in 2014? 2016, sir. 16. Oh, 16 to 18, you worked in Gale. Yes. And uh, 20 to 22, you were as a block development officer, right? Yes, sir. What about between 18 to 20? Sir, uh, I left my job in 2018. Uh -huh. And then the sir, uh, I cleared the PCS exam and uh, the joining came in 2020. So you are waiting for the joining in that two years? Uh, yes sir. They take two years to join? Sir, it roughly took, the exam only took uh, one, one okay. and a half year sir. So after that the joining got a bit delayed. So that is why there is a little gap. Now your interests are varied, electronics and communication engineering, international business, then political science. How the three fit in with each other? Sir, uh, I always wanted to be a civil servant from my younger days and I thought that a career in engineering will uh, give me the requirement, uh, required skills and also the flexibility in if and ever I am to fail in that particular aspect. So, I will be able to move to another career option. So, that is why I chose a career in engineering. And uh, after that, in order to better myself, better my career prospects, I went for MBA. Because, sir, um, 
uh, relying solely on the civil services exam, it's uh, quite risky because the chances of getting selected are uh, very less. So it, I thought it would be better for me that I have a backup plan also at the same time. Isn't it the, isn't it the exact attitude which is not letting you pass nine times that you are taking it casually, coolly, lightly and as a passing uh, thing? Let me try civil service. Do you think so? No, sir. Uh, I think that I gave my best in all the okay. attempts, sir. Then one more thing I find is military equipment interest. Military equipment. How come that uh, fit into your all schedule of uh, communication engineering, international business, political science and military equipment? Sir, uh, it's just an interest that I caught on from a very early age. I like to read about different kind of military acquisitions that have been going on around. I, I know it has nothing to do uh, with my academic qualifications, but it is just an interest I like to read. So you see a lot of tanks and movement in Punjab, Jalandhar Kant, this Kant and that, Mala Kant. Is it because of that you see a lot of movements? Yes, sir, there are. Uh, we do get to see tanks and uh, infantry vehicles on a regular basis. So I just like to read about them and their implications um, on international affairs and with respect to our neighbors. Good. Well, last question, was I. You have given your options. I think you have selected very, very carefully. Uh, in the, uh, out of all the candidates we find for the first time, you want to join only selected civil services and not opted for other services. Any specific reason? Uh, sir, this is because I have already been selected in DANIPS uh, in 2021. So for this exam, for this year on, I had selected only the options that I filled above DANIPS uh, last time. And I always wanted to work in administrative work, field work. So that is why I have filled uh, IS and IPS as my top preferences. But you have not filled up Indian Navy Management System? IRMS, uh, no, there you sir. can do a lot? Uh, sir, uh, I prefer DANIPS over those services, sir. Uh, I okay, one, one, just service. a small thing. Uh, you have given Indian Foreign Service a third choice. In your case, you have studied uh, in, uh, international business and political science and foreign trade and whatnot. Why not IFS is the first choice? You would have moved around the whole world. And you have appeared nine times. There are very high chances that you will go through this time. So why not IFS first choice? Just an idea. Sir, uh, it is true that I am interested in reading about geopolitical affairs. But uh, today, such affairs, international affairs have an implication on domestic uh, aspect as well. So as an IPS officer, I will be able to deal with the external security threats. And also as an IS officer, Today, our economy is opening up so much that we have so much to do uh, as a IS officer posted within India also. Filling IFS at the third uh, option, third choice was sir, more of a personal reason because since my wife, she is also a doctor, so I thought that uh, it will be difficult for her to uh, practice elsewhere. And secondly, my brother, he has already settled abroad, so I wanted to be close to my parents here in India. Okay. There was one Siddharth historical character who was who ran away, who, who left his kingdom. You are we now we have another Siddharth in front of us who is changing a job tenth time. Don't you find a contradiction in the Siddharth we had and then maybe in the Siddharth we have here? Sir uh, Siddharth of that time I think he was uh, in a totally different uh, situation, he wanted to find enlightenment and find the true meaning of life. And personally, for me, and not this Siddharth, <laughs> not this Siddharth, <laughs> sir. Uh, I also want to be a civil servant uh, and get uh, service of my choice and uh, excel at it. So I won't say that I want to find enlightenment or uh, go into uh, practicing what. Buddha at that time did, but yes, I have found it. I have found my ambition, I, and I would like to work towards it. So yes, there is a contradiction. Uh, the aims 
that we seek to achieve, they might be different, but I think we are persistent, both of us are persistently working towards it. So he left all material things. You are running after material things. So, so he he very consciously left something something which is tangible here, uh, and our Siddharth is persistently you know following it to achieve it. Anyway, so then next thing is that in case uh, Punjab has a very typical problem of drug addiction, and there have been allegations of lot much of corruption at the administrative level. Let's me let me put you at the district magistrate of the, any of the bordering districts. How do you propose to contain this menace? One, first amongst the young boys, young youngsters who have taken recourse to the, the, all the illegal, illicit drugs and other is the smuggling. Sir, uh, drug is drug problem is a very deep rooted and multi dimensional problem in Punjab. So, a multi dimensional strategy is required to fight it. We need a combination of prevention, enforcement, and de addiction. In order to prevent, we need to find out which are the most vulnerable sections which are prone to taking drugs, which are the unemployed youth, the sex workers, and also the transportation workers. We have to address the problem at the root cause and help them find suitable employment opportunities so that this problem can be prevented. Second is the enforcement. For uh, There is a lot of uh, cross-border transportation of drugs that is also taking place and also people are growing drugs in their backyard. The uh, opium plants, they are being grown uh, domestically at their homes. That should be addressed. And thirdly, uh, de-addiction we need uh, in Punjab, we have a DAPO system, which is Drug Addiction Prevention Officer and a buddy program. So in a way, the community has been involved in helping people get rid of drugs. So that can be pursued uh, on, in a wider sense. Yeah, Siddhan. <coughs> Siddharth, your geopolitical issues are interest. What is hmm? vaccine diplomacy? Kya hai? Sir, vaccine diplomacy may kafi countries ne aap jis bhi language mein comfort ho aap usko kare sir in vaccine diplomacy uh, many countries which have the capacity to deploy vaccine at a large scale such as india and china for that matter indian perspective se batai sir indian india undertook a program called vaccine maitri where why it uh, supplied uh, vaccine to neighboring countries who didn't have the capability to produce it on our own so it is a way of uh, projecting our soft power we are winning the goodwill of the countries uh, like maldives nepal bangladesh which have used our vaccines and also in a way it is able to project our geopolitical influence in our immediate neighborhood especially in the indian ocean region and in south asia so that is vaccine mm. <coughs> dsr ke pardon sir dsr sir i am not able to aapke government ki ek yojana hai punjab government ki direct seeding of rice is yojana ke bare mein kuch bhi nahi maloom hai yes sir i am aware of uh, dsr direct seeding uh-huh. seeding uh-huh. sir isme jo पानी की खपत होती है वो काफ़ी कम होती है और जो राइस के जो सैपलिंग्स पहले ग्रो किए जाते हैं एक नर्सरी में उनको डायरेक्टली सीड किया जाता है इससे जो वाटर की यूजेज काफ़ी कम होती है और फर्टिलाइजर की यूजेज काफ़ी कम रहती है और इससे जो उत्पाद है वो काफ़ी बढ़ जाता है राइस का लेकिन फॉर्मर आपके क्यों इसके अगेंस्ट में मूवमेंट चल रहा है आपके इसको लेकर ऐसा क्यों है सर मुझे इसके बारे में थोड़ा और पढ़ना पड़ेगा मुझे अच्छे इसके बारे में नॉलेज एक प्रश्न मेरा और है कि क्वाड और ब्रिक्स दोनों से परिचित होंगे आप बिल्कुल सर दोनों में इंडिया है बिल्कुल लेकिन दोनों में और भी कंट्रीज हैं जिन जो आपस में फाइट कर रहे हैं बिल्कुल ऐसे में इंडिया अपने इंटरेस्ट को कैसे बचाएगा क्या है क्या उसकी डिप्लोमेसी होगी सर जो सर ये जो दोनों ऑर्गेनाइजेशंस हैं ये अलग टाइम पे बनाई गई थी ब्रिक्स उस समय बना था जब 
इमर्जिंग इकोनमीज बहुत आगे आके आ रही थी और इनमें एक कोऑपरेशन की करने की भी इनमें एक पॉजिटिव वे में इनको देखा जा रहा था कि ये आपस में भी कोऑपरेट कर सकते हैं मैंने जो पूछा उसका जवाब दीजिए जी सर इंडिया अपने इंटरेस्ट को कैसे फुलफिल करेगा जबकि दोनों में कंट्राडिक्टरी फोर्सेज है बिल्कुल सर सर इंडिया को अपना सुप्रीम नेशनल इंटरेस्ट देखना चाहिए और एट द प्रेजेंट कंटेक्स में अगर हम देखें तो वो ये डिमांड करता है कि हमें जो लाइक माइंडेड डेमोक्रेसीज़ हैं जैसे कि यूएसए और बाकी के क्वाड मेंबर्स ऑस्ट्रेलिया और जापान उनके साथ एक स्ट्रॉन्ग रिलेशनशिप बिल्ड करें और इसकी एक इकोनॉमिक एंगल भी इसमें आ जाता है क्योंकि हमें अब चाइना के साथ काफ़ी कंट्रीज़ जो हैं इकनॉमिक डी कपलिंग की तरफ जा रहे हैं तो इसमें क्वाड कंट्रीज़ में आपस में बहुत सारा स्कोप है कि वो कोऑपरेशन से अपने सप्लाई चेन स्ट्रॉन्ग कर सकें और सर सेकेंडली इसमें मिलिट्री नहीं चाइना और अमेरिका दोनों इकोनॉमिक पावर है दोनों एक इसमें है एक उसमें है फिर कैसे आप मतलब क्या होना चाहिए इंडिया की जो बैलेंस वर्चुअली ऑन द टू बोर्ड्स सर इट इज़ ट्रू के इंडिया को सर दोनों ही केसेस को दोनों ही जो हैं प्लेटफॉर्म्स को एक एज अ प्लेटफॉर्म यूज़ करना चाहिए अपने इंटरेस्ट को फॉरवर्ड करने के लिए जहाँ तक ब्रिक्स की बात आती है करंटली हम देख रहे हैं कि हमारे पास चाइना के साथ काफ़ी सारा हमारे पास बॉर्डर डिस्प्यूट हो जाता है तो रिसेंटली हमने देखा था कि उसमें रशिया ने एक तरह से मीडिएटर का रोल प्ले किया जिससे कारण उनका भी कुछ रोल रहा था डी एस्केलेशन में बट अगर हम लॉन्ग टर्म की बात करें तो आप ये कैसे कह सकते हैं कि रसिया ने ये किया था कहाँ से आपको ये इनपुट मिला बट देर है अगर वैसे भी देखें तो भी नहीं है लेकिन ये इनपुट कहाँ से मिल रहे हैं आपको सर जब गलवान क्लैश हुआ था तो उस टाइम ब्रिक्स समिट उसके आसपास हुआ था तो उस टाइम ये न्यूज़ में रहा था ये इशू में था गलवान समिट की वो सॉरी ब्रिक समिट के नहीं सर आई एम नॉट अवेयर के वो इशू में था बट बैक न्यूज़ में था कि उन्होंने कुछ बैक चैनल टॉक्स किए हैं ओके सर ओके टेल मी व्हाट बिकॉज यू हैव डन समथिंग यू हैव डन योर मास्टर्स इन फॉरेन ट्रेड व्हाट इज द बिगेस्ट प्रॉब्लम दैट यू फेस टुडे इज विद रेफरेंस टू करंट अकाउंट डेफिसिट सर द बिगेस्ट प्रॉब्लम इज दैट आर एक्सपोर्ट्स आर नॉट price competitive and the reason for this is that we have poor logistics in most of the developed countries and export intensive countries such as china and southeast asia southeast asian nations such as vietnam indonesia the logistic cost is less than 9% whereas for india it is more than 14% which is a 3% of what 14% of the total uh, total cost. value okay. total value of the exports Okay. so that itself plays a large role in making our exports un uh, competitive and secondly india in spite of having more than 90% sea bond trade is not able to develop major ports as compared to other countries such as china or south korea or japan for that matter which is why india has not been able to emerge as a major transshipment hub and thirdly i think our uh, most of our uh, merchandise exports they are dominated by either cottage industries or very large industries our sim- the medium scale industries are simply not able to scale up so in that sense i think some kind of government support is also required so that uh, such industries can scale up okay um, so where you see india uh, with reference to foreign trade uh, on international platform in 2030 sir currently in recent years two factors have played a major role firstly is the economic decoupling with china most of the supply chains several sub- supply chains they are shifting away from china and secondly india has also ramped up infrastructure development and we have seen that uh, the exports they are now over 600 <coughs> billion dollars okay. so i think in coming decade we have tremendous scope to improve our foreign trade provide any any specific uh, scheme or a plan for the coming decade sir uh, the sagar mala project is being developed and the coastal economic zone project uh, is being developed and secondly our uh, foreign trade policy 2015 20 it is foreign trade new foreign trade policy is due we are it, just waiting it is due we are just uh, uh, no extending it by every 6 months 
No, I'm asking any specific uh, uh, multi-dimensional program that has been in which. Sir, I think the uh, production link incentive is being given to several uh, uh, cutting edge technology uh, based industries such as... Have you heard about uh, PM Gati Shakti? Yes, sir, I am aware of it. What's that? Sir, it is regard to infrastructure development. Uh, we want to develop our multimodal infrastructure in the future. So, it brings together all the ministries um, across the board and uh, in order to develop uh, in order to develop a, an integrated uh, infrastructure and the idea is plans. to reduce the transportation or what you call as the logistics cost I guess so why didn't you start it with that yes yes sir question was that now tell me that after Sikhism development which thoughts are there sir uh, Sikhism is a यंग uh, रिलीजन है उन्होंने काफी सारे डिफरेंट रिलीजन्स के जो अच्छे टीचिंग्स हैं उनको uh, अपने में इनकॉर्पोरेट किया है और इसमें जैसे गुरु नानक देव जी ने टीचिंग्स uh, दी थी किरत करो वन छको नाम जपो कि मतलब हमें uh, अपना नाम जपना चाहिए uh, भगवान का और अच्छे कर्म करने चाहिए और uh, लोगों के साथ मिल बांट के खाना चाहिए तो सर ये वाली टीचर थॉट्स और भी बताइए और भी वेरियस थॉट्स हैं जिसमें कबीर भी है रदास भी है बुल्ले शाह भी हैं वाजिद शाह भी हैं तो इस पूरे पर्सपेक्टिव में बताइए आप इसको क्वाइन करना हो अगर एक वर्ड में सिखी सिख रिलीजन को तो आप कैसे करेंगे किसके नियर अबाउट है वो सर इसको किसी एक पर्टिकुलर रिलीजन या एक पर्टिकुलर पर्सन हम ये कह सकते हैं कि ये हिंदू या मुस्लिम नहीं बल्कि ये सूफिज्म के करीब है सर इसमें सूफिज्म के काफी सारे फीचर्स हैं जैसे कि डिवोशनल म्यूजिक मतलब डिवोशन अपना शो करना पाठ जैसे के पढ़ते हैं वो भी uh, एक तरह से सूफिज्म वाले उसमें एस्पेक्ट्स हैं बट uh, इसमें सर ऐसा कहना सर बहुत मुश्किल है कि वो किसी एक पर्टिकुलर रिलीजन uh, के ज्यादा क्लोज हैं बिकॉज़ इसमें काफी सारे uh, जो रिलीजियस टीचिंग्स हैं उसको मिला के सर उसमें एक इंक्लूसिवनेस एक सेकुलरिज्म और एक जो अंधविश्वास को बाहर रखने वाले जो एस्पेक्ट्स हैं उसको डाल दिया गया है